Hey everybody, welcome to Lesser Saints of Discord. <laughs> uh, yeah, every Friday, 4.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yeah. Jables with me as always. Grimsheen, sir. Mm-hmm. And yeah. My son needs to keep that shit out of his mouth. Well. Oh. Yeah. Shouldn't be eating shit. It wasn't yeah, fit. It was a uh, SD. It, it was a micro SD to SD card adapter. Oh, I see. Did they change the chat bar look? A uh, little bit. Okay, so it wasn't just me. Damn you, Twitch! Cause my OCD to go off. Just fiddle, 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 fiddle. I mean, it's only us on here, so what's it really matter? Yeah. No one watches us. That's okay. Yeah, it's fine. I got no issues with it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're doing here. Allegedly. Has nothing to do with uh, forming an alibi. Of course not. This is definitely not pre-recorded. <laughs> Portions of the following program are pre-recorded. <laughs> the audience isn't in on it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course they're it's not. not like the, the audience, audience isn't even is here. They are friends, and they're just gonna chat like normal, like we've planned all this or anything. That's definitely not is not what ha happened. Yeah. Nope. Not what's happening. Nope. Yeah. Not a thing. So how was your week? I well, got my something. motorcycle back. Nice. Hooray. I've been riding that to work. My lower back is a little bit sore getting pounded out no just it, it's been like a, a year and a half two years since i've ridden my mo motorcycle so oh, okay adjustment period yeah no. I had, I had it's mostly me riding other people's asses yeah. <laughs> i had something happen that made my week so I'm constantly complaining about people's lack of awareness of like spatial awareness of where they are and things going on around them and shit. Like stopping at the most narrow spots in the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. uh, I was walking home from the store and these two people that were in front of me were walking kind of slow. And one of the chicks just, like, caught me out of the corner of her eye. She's like, oh, we're walking a lot slower than you. You can go ahead and pass. I was like, oh, thank you. It's like, what? That never fucking happens. This is great. It was a good day. That sounds pretty takes. good. Yeah, just a little just a little courtesy for the other people around me. That's all I need in my life. Yeah, I finally, <laughs> they finally shipped me my graduation certificate from my uh, apprenticeship. Yeah. Along with a little award for coming in second place in terms of highest GPA. Of which I had no idea that they were going to give me a fucking award for that. Otherwise, I would have intentionally missed the, uh, uh, the graduation as opposed to just, hey, shit was going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's... And then there's other shit, like, uh... Because I deal with sonic welding at work. Mm -hmm. I have to yeah. do hearing tests every year, you know? Mm -hmm. And the last two times I've done it, well, it's been pretty bad, but that's because I've been... I was con I was congested with allergies both times. Because mm -hmm. once allergy season passes, I just forget to buy the stuff or take it, really, until the allergies kick in again. <laughs> and I took a page out of my cousin's book... And it's just, just buy a lot, just take it every day. Just get in that habit. And so I've been doing that, so I wasn't all congested this time. 
and my hearing was way better. And those two times that it was bad, the safety person at my work came up and had a talk with me about it, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot better now. Haven't seen her. <laughs> Be like, hey, you weren't lying about having allergies those two times. Because she looked at me like I was lying when I said that. It's like, fuck you. Well, that's the she thing. That's the thing, Jables. It's like, she could imply that you're lying, but she also can't be wrong. Yeah. And she can't apologize. Yeah. Or even well, just be like, actually, hey, first off, how many, how many employees she, does your company have? Oh, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. She doesn't even have to, like, apologize or anything like that. She just has to come in and be like, hey... Looks like your hearing's gotten a little better. And then I could be like, yeah, I had allergy. I had really bad allergies the last couple times. And then tell you guys the same thing I did. That I just started taking the allergy meds every day all year round. <laughs> and she'd be like, oh, cool. So that seems to work. Great. And we can just have that nice little interaction. All right. How what, big is your what, company? Uh, How many employees does it have? Um, I think it's over 300. Yeah, she's not going to remember you exist. Oh, no, she knows me by name. Yeah, because we had less than 200 last time. Mm. She waves to me, says hi to me and shit. Hey, Jake. Yeah, she probably doesn't remember those interactions, though. Those are not relevant in her head. Because I guarantee you, uh, Belly Bob Joel... Uh, oh, no. Butch Cassidy yeah, the second okay, so has been doing there's... fucking donuts in the forklift. There, there's less than 100 that have to take the hearing test, though, as well. And, like, she has a pretty cush job. Because it's not that many are doing things that safety has to really pay attention to. This is yes, the same chick that, you like, have... with the whole, like, why didn't you just have the cards printed out thing? What? Hi, Scup. Or, or was that another one? Or er, not Scup, Skull. God damn it. I'm having a day. I've oh, had yeah, a good the... day, but my brain yeah. is dead. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, the same chick that just didn't have the cards printed out already when we did the yeah. when we did the fire extinguisher stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. She remembered the uh the interaction when my Hearing was tested bad, though. So. Well, of course. Because then she could, you know, play the whole middle management card on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's coming. Just... She's coming. She's coming several times being like, hey, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Because of your hearing stuff? Like, it's not. This has been an ongoing thing. Well, you just suddenly became I uh, I don't have have to have paperwork on him now. So she's not going to pay attention to you uh, from a safety perspective. Yeah. Whatever, fucker. This is also the same chick that uh, at the beginning of the pandemic made me and somebody else sit six feet apart in this conference room. Yeah. And then I stood right this. across the table, like three feet away from us. Say what you yeah. will about the six feet apart uh, portion of that. People weren't fucking consistent on it. A, yeah. it's, it's just middle management syndrome. Yeah, yeah like also... the safety for my company is pretty chill. I mean, he comes out and he does audits every once in a while to different job sites. But for the most part, he gets it. Yeah. Like the the la, uh the first job for this company I was on, I actually ended up being the foreman in charge closing it out. And uh he he came out to check 
when we when basically everything was closed up it was turned over all that fun stuff and we were walking around with safety glasses and vests on but we weren't walking around with the hard hat because there really just was no fucking reason he, he he's like he told me you know company policy is to always wear your hard hat no matter what but i get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah the other thing is when she was separating me and that guy by six feet we work in the same tiny room together with the door closed all day i'm pretty sure this interaction right here isn't going to prevent us from catching something from each other. We touch a lot of the same tools. Al, if you were close enough friends, I would have said make out in front of her. <laughs> no, I didn't know him that well. <laughs> Plus, he wasn't a good looker. So that <laughs> Knew that part was coming. Again, Jable's implying that he has standards. Yeah. yeah, the biggest issue with your standards, Jables, is your lack of them. No. The biggest problem is that they're inconsistent. No, they're fairly consistent. As long as you can make a joke out of it, your standards are flexible as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A truer statement has probably never been made on this show. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Let's go. Hope you've had a good week. Um, yeah. As I was telling Rimshine Jables before the show started, I met a YouTuber on Monday. Yeah. A guy by the name of Tom Grassi. Who's a Green Bay Packers fan that lives in New York and became a Packers fan out of spite because his dad is a Cowboys fan. <laughs> well, okay, you could just, pick just about any team for that one. Yeah, but also a Cowboys fan in New York. That's weird, too. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, like, um, he, went, he said he went to school one day and he had heard that the uh, Packers had beaten the Cowboys and I think the NFC Championship game. He came home and told his dad that he was a Packers fan. Because <laughs> his dad, oh. his dad tried to make him a Cowboys fan. It didn't work. Yeah, there's a there's a radio show I listen to called The Bonfire. One of the producers on that show is a Cowboys fan, but that's because his brother is an Eagles fan and just a dick about it. Mm. And they have a Cowboys and Eagles have a big rivalry. Yep, it's like, they're divisional like rivals. Cowboys fan now. Yeah. Yep, he started a thing called Thirty and Thirty. He took the money that he had saved up to put a down payment on a house in Green Bay to do this trip. He's visiting all 30 NFL stadiums in 30 days. Yeah, which is pretty sweet. And he's raised over $180,000 for St. Jude so far. Nice. He was actually at St. Jude on Tuesday because they drove him down. Well, they, they picked him, a representative from St. Jude picked him up in Cincinnati and drove him to Indianapolis and then drove him from Indianapolis down to Memphis and then later to Nashville so that he could visit the Titans. Yeah. Yeah, I like when people do stuff like that to raise charity. Uh, he like... does he does all kinds of charity work. <clears throat> you know, like this man has never taken a super chat or a stream labs that I'm aware of. Not for himself. Yeah. Yeah, there's actually a stream labs type website that it works the same as stream labs, but you can link it up with a charity so people can do the same thing as stream labs, but it goes to the charity instead. 
and then you're like, like he actively tells you like everybody and so you're like, you know, don't give me anything. You're like, don't send me any money. I'm fine. I don't need it. But if you are going to send money, there are places that you can send it. Yeah. <clears throat> There's this one guy that just did a, uh, he skateboarded across the country. Hmm. From uh, Venice Beach, California to Virginia Beach, Virginia. And he was raising money for a charity that helps uh, youths with addiction and stuff. Hmm. Nice. Cause he, yeah, because he, uh, he had a really bad alcoholism problem. And he started skating to, as like his hobby to not drink. Mm-hmm. And so he was just like, yeah, I'll just skate across the country. Did it in like 56 days. Nice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, um, he's starting to get, fortunately, he's starting to get a bit more traction now because, like, um, the NFL Twitter page like uh, retweeted a video clip of him jumping through a table in Buffalo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he was also on a uh, Pat McAfee while he was here in Indy. I don't know who Pat McAfee is. He uh, used to be a player for the Colts. Okay. And he has his own like uh, sports uh, podcast now. It's, I think it's the biggest single sports podcast. Nice. At least by viewership. Yeah, I don't pay that much attention to sports. So. I said, I normally don't either, but like, that's the thing is like, I don't follow sports much, but I follow sports YouTubers. Okay. And the two major ones that I follow now are <clears throat> Grassi, because um, like last year he streamed every NFL primetime game, and I mean every one. <laughs> and uh, the other one that I follow is a urinating tree. That guy is probably one of my favorite YouTubers. <laughs> He's the Yenzer. Why does that name sound familiar? He's talked about them a few times in the past. Okay. Yeah, Yenzer basically means that you're a fan of Pittsburgh sports. Oh, no, I was talking about urinating tree. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I've mentioned him a few times in the past. All right. Oh. So, Jables, did you do audience, your homework and find some... <laughs> pro tip, which, if you're not you... into sports, but you want to seem like you're into sports, <clears throat> if you're going to a bar or something, uh, use Reddit. And just look up your local teams. And they'll give you all the stats that you need. Assuming that those reddits are still public at the moment. Yeah. As I don't follow sports much, although I will admit that guys like Tree and uh, Grassy, they did kind of get me back into football. I do, I do kind of pay attention to it again now, because <laughs> I have. Yeah, I'm kind. Of, yeah, I'm kind of at the point where I can watch. When I'm watching the game, I'm into it. Most of the time, I don't really care. Yeah, it's like I, I could be doing other stuff right now. And every time I've tried to get back into it, it's like halfway through the season already, and I'm well. Yeah, like, like I'm not like gonna be like telling you like stats or anything, but you know, like, I have a good idea, at least of you know, like what teams are kind of you know, like on an upward trajectory or ones mm. that are probably gonna be shit for a while. Oh yeah, I just eavesdrops on other, I just eavesdrop on other people having conversations. I'm like, okay, I know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, the Lions is gonna be a team to watch this year, I think. 
I think the Lions are going to be good this year. Because they just barely missed out on the playoffs last year. Okay. If Seattle hadn't have decided to win and drag their shitty ass to the playoffs to get knocked out in the first round. Fuck yourself. No, man. Seattle was fucking trash last year. Probably, but... You know, <laughs> I mean, they weren't as bad as the fucking Rams, but <laughs> when aren't the Rams bad, though? No, that's the thing is that they won the Super Bowl the year prior and then went on to have the worst record of any defending Super Bowl champion ever. <laughs> what? Well, you know, the most annoying thing for me about football, the 49ers. We went yeah, the 49ers we went and got won what? Fucked, man. Yeah, we we went and won what? 5 or 6 Super Bowls back in the day, and then the first time we make it back to the Super Bowl, we show our fucking asses. Someone mm -hmm. decides to unplug half the stadium so the game has to be postponed, and then That's we hilarious. come back swinging and uh can't do fuck all. We're, we're yeah, that, fucking murdering that's... it, but because of just technicalities, it, it's it can't get it back. Whoever it was that waited to unplug the fucking lights just waited a little too long. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like um, what happened? Like this has been like the Super Bowl the last four years. Is a uh, 49ers go against the Chiefs and lose. Then the Chiefs go back the very next year against the Buccaneers under Tom Brady and get their asses kicked. Then uh, it was uh, the Rams versus the Bengals. And the Bengals, that was their first time back in a long time. Rams win. Mainly because the Bengals didn't have an offensive line. but <laughs> And then this past year, well, this past Super Bowl this year, was the Eagles versus the Chiefs, which the Chiefs won. The 49ers could have been there, Wait, maybe. The Eagles won. No, the Eagles did not win. Oh, no, that was the... Yeah, never mind. That was longer. Yeah, that was against the Patriots, and that was yeah. a little bit ago now. The most annoying thing to me about football is it's not hockey. Thanks, Canadian Y2K. To be fair, hockey's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Y2K, like, I haven't checked. Uh, who won? The Golden Knights or the Panthers? Like, if you keep up on that, anyway. Yeah, I'm, I still have yet to go to a Seattle Kraken game. I need to go. They had a decent year. Like, they didn't make it to the final round, obviously. But, you know, for a new team, they're not doing terribly. They started real rough. But... Oh, so the Golden Knights won. Okay. It baffles me that Vegas has a hockey team. <laughs> of all the places to have hockey teams. Well, well like, then you've got the Sharks who who they, they go through cycles. They go really good and then for an entire season and then like halfway through the postseason, the playoffs. No, they just fucking lose it. Or or it's just a shitty year all around. There's no winning and there's no um well, they had a good season and then lost it early in the playoffs or just barely couldn't make it. No, it's either all or nothing for the for the Sharks. Up until the end, they can't get to the end. Yeah, Except it's, kind once. Been the, it's kind of been the same story with the Stars lately. Well, the Sharks have never won the Stanley Cup. Oh, I know. Yeah, like uh, the Golden Knights, you know, they got to the Stanley Cup final in their first year as a team, and they lost to the Capitals, I believe. Well, I guess that's what happens when you throw money at a team. 
Yeah, that's kind of what Vegas has just been doing, is just, like, you know, throwing money. And, you know, hey, they got they got the fucking cup. They're probably going to be shit for a little while after this, because uh, they had to trade away a lot of future prospects. But, <laughs> but Jables is talking about, like, you know, a fucking, like, uh, a hockey team in Vegas. It's like, fucking the Coyotes, man. Although I don't know how much longer they're going to be in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm working on a bit right now about how Seattle's so white that we lost our basketball team and gained a hockey team. <laughs> um. <laughs> Open, accepting, multicultural Seattle. Yeah. It is hey. too German. Hey, look at this way, Canuck. You know, not Canuck. Uh, Y2K. I miss Canuck. He hasn't been here in a while. But look He's at this playing. way. He's off playing Conan XLs. Yeah, I know. But look at this way, Y2K. The, the Maple Leafs won a series. Finally. <laughs> yeah, okay. So... Y2K, I've wanted, I've wanted a nice non-Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about the Leafs. I mean, you're not wrong. Apparently, the leaves don't even care about the leaves. Urinating Tree's legacy of failure on the Toronto Maple Leaves video is great. Hey, One of his Cassin, best videos. Three bitties. Hey, cats! Hey! <laughs> I mean, there are always worse teams. Like the Sabres. Well, wasn't Mike Myers a Maple Leafs fan? Yeah, but that's also Mike Myers. Also, when the fuck was the last time anybody saw him? He's just off doing his own thing. Let him chill. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like, I, that's fine. It's just like, I, I just hope he's okay out there. Uh, Yeah, from what I've seen and heard, he's doing fine. Dana Carvey has a podcast with, what's his name? David Spade. Uh... They've mentioned him a couple of times. The Danas have a have a podcast together. What's it called? I I forget what it's called. Have either of you seen the fucking Odyssey that is Andy Dick? Oh, he's not doing great. <laughs> no, no, he's not. <laughs> I haven't seen him lately. I was following that whole saga when he was just. Popping on IRL streamers RVs and shit. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I guess he's still sexually assaulting people. <laughs> it's fucking Andy. I don't know how he keeps getting away with it, honestly. <laughs> Especially post Me Too. Uh, by the way, the well, Dana to Carvey be fair, do you Spade think podcast is called Fly on the Wall? Nice. Do you think uh, that they... any that anyone with uh, anyone that looks like that uh, who didn't have power could get anything any other way? I mean, apparently he's yeah. a really charming guy. Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, apparently, like he didn't get away with it at least one time. You know, like according to like several comments that I saw on videos related to the subject. Like that guy that fucked up his face. Oh, he... no, no. I, I'm talking legally. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, he's been beaten up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, Again, look at him. <laughs> yeah, he's in a rough spot. Um, there was also... Oh, Shut God. up, phone. Sir... I, it's fucking spam callers, man. Naughty, naughty. 
fuckers won't that's, leave me alone. That's what the silence option is for. Or at least vibrate. Well, I didn't set it before the stream you starts. Set it to vibrate and put it on your crotch. Mm -hmm. That's what the Xbox controllers were. <laughs> Yeah, I'll play Halo. I don't Get think my fucking has, turret. I don't think my phone has made a sound for a notification or a call since I bought it. I think mine has once or twice. Um but that includes the actual setup of the phone where the uh the technician helps and verifies. Yeah. I think it's yeah. like, I don't always have my phone within reach. So I have like both my like ringer and my text notifications set to volumes where I can hear it across the house. Nah, I, I don't even bother with that. <laughs> I'll see my phone eventually. What I have a child. My, my phone, phone is always like on me. I got, I got drunk one time and just placed my phone in a weird place in my apartment. I knew it was in my apartment because I had ordered food the night before. Mm. Um, so it's like, it has to be here. I just ended up going the weekend without it, and then Sunday night actually looked for it, found it. It was behind my TV. <laughs> it's always the last place you look. Yeah, the most illogical. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, that's the thing is like, you know, <laughs> like sometimes like I'm sure we've all had that experience where it's like we were looking for something. And then when you eventually find it and you just stand there for a minute, it's like, why the fuck did I put this here? Or or why the fuck didn't I, didn't I already look here? Why the fuck didn't I see this here? Oh yeah, that one's the worst. Cause it's like I, I looked right at it. <laughs> well, it's like me with the butter earlier today. Uh, my wife moved it so that the the kitchen counter would be a little clearer. Mm -hmm. And so, given that it wasn't in its normal spot, I'm looking at all the counter. Well, she moved it from the counter up to the little. Uh, on the other side of our kitchen peninsula counter sort of thing is a bunch of bookshelves and it rises above the uh, countertop by a good four inches. Well, she set it up on top of that thing. And she's okay. telling me, it's right in front of your face. And I keep turning around uh, looking right in front of my right in front of where I'm looking. I'm like, I don't fucking see it. <laughs> You're looking too low. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But... And that's when he yelled at her, don't move my fucking butter. What do you mean am I complaining <laughs> again? I'm talking about the butter incident earlier today. <laughs> don't no. move my fucking butter. I need my fucking butter. Shut up, Jables. I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to text her. Rim, she's talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you live. Do you? Yeah. Hey, that was that was oh, still yeah, one of the... probably in like a text log or something. Yeah. No, I picked oh. you up from your place. Remember? Yeah, I know, but that's. Do you remember how to get there though? Yeah. Oh goddamn! <laughs> also, right. you sent me the fucking address. I know. That's what I said. And my wife has it somewhere. <laughs> that was still one of the funniest impromptu moments on this show, is when Javels texted her to hit you, and she did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you just knew immediately. And you're like, God damn it, Javels. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was great. So, you guys want to go through some wacky laws? Yeah! Uh, I got a list to do me. Oh, uh, it's live show. Live show. 
I'm in the wrong server. Make me do extra work to, to prep this shit, why don't you? You're the one that asked right before the show started, and we all forgot. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> to it. Yeah. No, I you didn't forget. I thought about it a couple of times. I just happened to have a <clears throat> kid that I was chasing around each time. <laughs> That's fine. All right. We all forgot. Uh, is this one of those view gallery 50 slides? No, it's all scroll down for me. Yeah, it's slides for me. <laughs> what is wrong with your guys' <laughs> browsers? What are you guys I don't doing? know. <laughs> I'm using Brave, what I always okay. use for the fucking show. I thought you were like... Basilisk for the show. Okay. But it's good housekeeping, so we're all on the same page. Yeah, it's not slides for me, it's all scroll down. Hey, I, mean, I can read it either way. <laughs> In fact, I think I shall. 50 craziest state laws from around the United States. There's no doubt about it. There are some crazy, bizarre state laws that exist in the United States. Sure, they oh, may have just, made... Huh? Just get to the laws. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to do a prelude, but fuck you. Oh, why not? Here's the prelude. We said we were going to talk about some wacky laws. Let's go for it. Speaking of which, Let's we talked about many this last week. In Alabama, it is illegal to drive blindfolded. How many people drove blindfolded? I have no idea. You know what? Yeah, let's play a game. Let's try to create the scenario that ended up getting these laws created. I think they were a group of people, probably teenagers or early 20s people, that would play a game, how far can you make it down this road blindfolded? I no, got a different. I, I got a different idea. Okay. What? Uh, I'm I'm thinking that a uh, wife wanted to uh, drive her husband to a surprise, but uh, so she she had to blindfold him, but he refused to let her drive, <laughs> and so she was trying she was trying to describe how to get there and where to turn and whatnot, and tell him turn here. And it just didn't end well. He oh, took out a, a school full card. of kids. Yeah, he yeah. tried to try. He ended up taking us out a school full of kids. Okay. Hey, with rally cars, it's the fucking spectators that keep walking onto the track. That's not the drivers' fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't, let, rally cars they don't let them do that anymore. That's the thing. <laughs> they don't let them do that anymore. But uh. What I was going to ask is like, now, what, a question is like, did this law come about during the time of the automobile or buggies? Mm. It's like, how old is this one? I stand by my statement either way. You ever seen those news stories about, like, Amish people that get pulled over for, like, driving their horse buggies drunk? That's always amusing. Yeah. Yeah, I remember in one state, somebody beat a DUI charge because the horse knew how to get home. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I, I'm, not e it's like I'm not even control. He, he just knows yeah. where to go, man. Yeah. The horse just knows what to do. I'm not doing shit. <laughs> I could have fallen asleep behind the wheel and nothing would have been different. Yeah. Alright, so I'm assuming these are in alphabetical order, so moving on. Yep. In Alaska, you can't put an animal in the back of an open vehicle. Hmm. Wait. 
can't put an animal in the back of an open vehicle. So, like, you can't have a dog in the bed of your truck? Well, to a... To, <laughs> so, there's more to this. It says, uh... Unless the dog's tail wags 46 inches or higher. Which, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> oh, but, so you can't have small dogs. Because if you hit a... If you hit a bump, they might fly out. It's because uh, one pup was reported as a public nuisance. I don't know how that... Yeah, I don't... Huh. Like, I'm sure there's something logical behind this. Like, it, I'm sure it makes sense once we hear what caused it. But this just sounds stupid. And also the fact that, like, it, the way it's... it's you can't put an animal in the back of an open vehicle, but in the wording of the law, it specifies dogs. Okay, hold on. I have the actual law. Uh, no person driving a motor vehicle shall transport any animal in the back of the vehicle in a space intended for any load on the vehicle on a street unless the space is enclosed or has a side and tail walls to a height of at least 46 inches extending vertically from the floor. So, pickup trucks. Yes, but it has to be 46 inches, so like an extra like there's extra wall. Yeah, the basically it has to come up to your chest and then or yeah. the animal is crossed or it has to have a vehicle or is protected by a secured container or cage in a manner which will prevent the animal from being thrown, falling, or jumping from the vehicle. Yeah, so this is this is a sleight of hand. That's a law that makes perfect sense. Mm. Yeah, that's just... How, yeah, that's... What they're talking okay, about so the this dog being, being a... a public nuisance, there was just a dog jumping out of the bed of a truck and just bugging people. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I honestly don't think that this should even be here. Nope. They so, just, uh, uh, just altered pet... it to make their shit better. Yeah, this you've is al- just pet safety. You've already got a strike, good housekeeping. Let's see if you incur any more. Okay, so we, we talked about this one last week, too. In Arizona, it's illegal for a donkey to sleep in a bathtub. In the 1920s, a local dam broke, flooding a rancher's home. The rancher's donkey had become accustomed to sleeping in the bathtub, which filled with water, and whisked him miles away. After working to rescue the animal, the town passed a law that prohibits donkeys from sleeping in the bathtub. That's incredibly specific. Yeah. Um, no. I'm getting more info on this. This one seems weird, but I mean, how do you, how, how exactly do, does good housekeeping fuck up a law to this point? I'm not sure that they could do that. Yeah, I feel like this is just going to be like, this is going to turn into an exercise of us fact checking good housekeeping, which <laughs> Fuck it, I'm all for it, but... Okay. We'll make Jables do it. So, <laughs> yeah. I did it. I found it. So what's um, the word, chicken bird? Yeah, so apparently when the flood happened, the donkey was just sleeping in the bathtub and it got whisked away. And it cost them so much money to save the donkey that they were <laughs> like, donkeys can't sleep in bathtubs anymore. This is... We can't spend all this money searching for a donkey. Donkey just has to die in the flood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that is a I'm dumb law. Like I get where they're extremely paraphrased version of it, but yeah, that's. I that's get where they're about. coming from with that, but that is still a dumb law, and it, it's <laughs> worth being on this list. Yeah. Had to travel all over to find your ass. In Arkansas, you can't honk your horn near a sandwich shop after 9 p.m. 
A hangry fool may be to blame for this law, but hey, most of the sandwich shops are closed in the sleepy state of Arkansas by 9 p.m. anyway. If you do feel the urge to honk after hours, you'll be disturbing the peace and you'll still be hungry. Yeah, I don't think that has anything to do with the law. Yeah, that just sounds like an ordinance thing. Yeah, I mean, this does sound like a, a dumb law, but it's not that crazy. Yeah, I think it's just a noise ordinance thing. Yeah. The full law is just one sentence. What's the law? No person shall sound the horn of a, on a vehicle at any place where cold drinks or sandwiches are served after 9 p.m. Yeah, that is oddly specific. Yeah. Like, why you know specifically sandwich shops? And cold also, where cold drinks are served. Why? Yeah. Also, am I the only one that noticed that, like, this sandwich, like, apparently... Like, the one pictured apparently looks like it has, like, olives on it? And there's, like, dry coleslaw in the background. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that sandwich. That seems like some... Like, th those Nothing are like clearly, shit. those are like clearly coleslaw ingredients, but there's no dressing. It's, it's, it's dry. What, what the fuck? What is that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, all right. Scenario for this one. Um, people were getting beers and sandwiches. And they'd call a buddy to come pick them up, and the buddy would be outside just honking their horn. Mm. Well, that sounds likely. That that sounds the most reasonable. Yeah. And somebody got shitty about it, and yeah. My guess is it wasn't specifically a sandwich shop. Because the law says any place where cold drinks or sandwiches are served. So I'm thinking bar. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's that's that makes sense to me. Or they'd be calling a cab and the cab would just be honking out front. You call it's out still front? it's still fucking specific for what it is. This Which is one's weird. interesting. In California, it's illegal to whistle for a lost canary before 7 a.m. <laughs> what the fuck? We're not entirely sure how this bizarre law came about, but according to California.com, the city of Berkeley, California, prohibits anyone from whistling for their lost canary before the wee hours of 7 a.m. I've been up for two, three hours by that point. Yeah, me too. So, what the fuck is this law? Uh, canaries probably don't wake up until later in the morning. Oh. And it's specific to Berkeley. So... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe people... Alright, people were going around Berkeley. Yeah. Around the University of California, Berkeley, more specifically. Uh, students were going around waking up the canaries, causing a problem. Some of them were dying because they lost their circadian rhythm. It was a, my, it, it, it was a senior prank gone wrong. Yeah. My question is, like, what if I'm just wandering around before 7 a.m. in Berkeley whistling for any other reason? Like, how the fuck do they know if I'm whistling for a canary specifically? Know, How maybe, does one uh, specifically whistle for a canary? <laughs> you know what? I wish I had an answer. I have so <laughs> many questions now. Hey, is there a technique to it? <laughs> or do you just do the Andy Griffith theme? Well, apparently the Canary Islands have a whole language based on whistling. What the fuck? 
<laughs> That's the lost the canary is. they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we're falling down a rabbit hole here. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a rabbit hole for another day. Goodbye, Saturday. Um, Moving on. <laughs> In Colorado, it is illegal to keep a couch on your porch. Boulder busted the University of Colorado for burning couches, causing a law to go into effect that keeps couches and porches mutually exclusive. Wait, what? So basically because people were keeping couches on their porch so that when they sat out there, they had somewhere comfortable, comfortable to sit. Uh, I guess students were stealing those couches and lighting them on fire. Yeah, that's the. Yeah, that's the scenario I see. Yeah. The law is currently active, but the verdict is still out as to whether it actually prevented any couch bonfires. Plus, a, a couch on a nice covered porch, it's a great time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great way to watch storms, if that's your thing. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to just hang out in general. Yeah, that one's... That was reasonable, I guess. It just comes about from college students being what college students usually are little assholes but <laughs> drunk and high and sex crazed assholes mm -hmm. so marines without the firearms no no don't besperch the marines like that <laughs> they're way worse <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Look, the moment you you uh, have a college party that uh, at some point ends up with a bunch of guys throwing all of their mattresses off the third floor so that they could jump off said third floor and land without getting hurt and then do so. What? Oh, <laughs> this this is good. This one's good. In Connecticut, a pickle must be able to bounce. That's that's weird. <laughs> In 1948, two men were arrested for selling pickles that were unfit for human consumption. Discussing ways to check for good pickles, officials declared that a pickle is legitimate only if it bounces. The pickles in question did not bounce. So the two men were arrested and fined, and the pickles were destroyed. What the fuck? Even the story behind how it came to be makes no real sense. No. All right. Here's what I'm guessing. Bad pickles are mushy, so they won't bounce. I mean... Sure, but do regular pickles are, are regular pickles known for their bounciness? No. And also, like, is how did like is it a drop test? Did they throw it at the ground? Like, how much yeah, does it have involved? a height requirement? I don't know. I'm kind of looking at it. Um... It's a 16 page fucking thing. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are there any specifics about the bounce? How high does it have to bounce back up? Yeah. Yeah. Not like the, off. the the article that was written was by the law by, by a law of reference librarian. And it's 16 fucking pages. Uh, oh my god. Connecticut literally just made a dissertation on, you know, like, the acceptable bounciness of pickles. Pretty Jesus much, yeah. Christ. Damn. Yeah, you guys are curious. There really is nothing going on in New England. All right. 
Let's see yeah, what I'd our be next. Really curious, uh, Malkoth, or however you say your name. There's a link for it. It's 16 pages. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they go into detail about the bounciness. I'm just the not fact that it's right 16 now. pages. Yeah. Yeah, and it was published in a in a library newsletter. Um. So, let's see what our next state has in store. In Delaware, you can't sell dog hair. State residents of Delaware are barred from selling the hair of a dog or cat. Okay, my guess for this scenario is uh, back in the old days... People were selling dog and cat hair, and they were just shaving stray dogs and cats left and right. So you just had a bunch of naked dogs and cats running around, and they were selling it for pillows. Yeah, I, that's what I think is like, you know, like using it as like stuffing for something. But yeah, but the people selling those pillows didn't inform anybody that it was made with dog and cat hair and people that were allergic were having a rough time yeah was, plus all should, the naked animals running around yeah, dying from say, exposure like, this seems like it's based on like a sanitation thing uh yeah it's just a fucking weird law yeah don't shave your dogs Without good reason. And selling their hair is not a good reason. Yeah. yeah. Don't do that. Surgery is! Wait, speaking of things that are done to dogs, uh, did you guys know about that guy that uh, got this tattoo that he saw on this dog that he adopted? And it, and it turned out, out to be... Yeah, it he's the, neutered. The <laughs> Yeah. All right. In Florida, legal parking fees towards animals must be paid. So, legal fees have to be paid for animal parking, including elephants, camels, and horses. According to Country Living, this law took effect in the 1920s when the Ringling Brothers Circus moved its winter show operations to Florida. Makes sense. They didn't even have to say yeah, that th it had to do with the Ringling Brothers. It just it just made sense already. Florida's a weird place. Yeah, I mean, that one, it, it makes total sense, but it's a weird enough law. It, it gets passed. Yeah, they have an invasive yep. snake problem because in the 80s, when everybody was doing coke, it was cool to have a large snake. And then when they didn't want to take care of it anymore, they just released it. I said, <laughs> I've talked about for the the bulk of that issue happened because of Hurricane Andrew. But... Oh. My story's better. Yeah, I mean, like, that obviously didn't help, but, like, a whole bunch of the fuckers escaped when a facility was destroyed by that hurricane. Yeah. All right. So, I wouldn't even say that's Florida weird. You know, like, it's like, that's kind of tame for Florida. Yeah, but we're also talking Florida in the 1920s. Yeah. It's it's tame for modern day Florida. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, but it's also a law. It, it's how how weird do Florida's laws get? Is this this doesn't seem like a normal or an unusual uh, a normal Florida law even. The people of Florida are weird. The laws are <laughs> cookie cutter except for a yeah. few. Okay. In Georgia, it's illegal to live on a boat for more than 30 days. That is a weird one. I, I wonder where that came from. 
If you're planning to retire on a boat, the Peach State is definitely not the place for you. According to state law, it is prohibited to live on a boat for more than a month. Property tax. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's the only one that makes any sense. It's like, it's like, hey, you can't do that. We need your money. Yeah. Now, my question is, is it all of Georgia or is it a specific county or a specific city? It says state it's, it's law. It's state law. Oh. Yeah. Um, it's weird. Yeah. But very simple, likely explanation. Yep. Just like, fuck you, give us money. Yep. Which I would think California would be the one to do that. No, uh, California is all about fucking not whistling for lost parakeets, I guess. Yeah, unless your work, <laughs> invol unless your work involves the boat, you can't. Hmm. I see. Or something like that. I don't know. I'm just scanning through this law right yeah, maybe there's a oh you're okay if it's like for a recreational trip or something, or if your no, livelihood. Seems, uh, it... Um. I mean, like you're on a cruise type of recreational trip, not. Oh yeah. We're renting this boat, and we're gonna live on it for a month. Yeah, I live... I live next to a marina. There's people that just live on the boats. My younger uh -huh. brother... Uh, my, my, my brother used to rent out a boat from someone and live on it. Uh, these people own the boats, generally. Yeah, they but... The uh, uh, remember, California. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. It seems nice. Like, I've slept on one of those boats. Comfy. I haven't. So, in Hawaii... Kind of nice. You're kind of getting rocked to sleep by the water. <laughs> in Hawaii, it is illegal to place a coin in one's ear. Apparently, this strange law was enacted to protect the Kingdom of Hawaii coinage when Hawaii officially joined the United States in 1900. That's... Okay. I don't know how putting coins in ears is dangerous. Like, coins are made of metal. They're, yeah, they're how is that resilient. dangerous to the coin? Yeah, that the way that pr to protect the coinage, it's just like I don't think the coin is what you'd have to be worried about there. Yeah. Um, I'm looking through. I mean, that's just a weird one in general, no matter the answer. Oh. So, when Hawaii became part of the United States, there was an order to destroy all Hawaiian coins and people would hide them in their ears. And uh... now, it's a sign of being a drug dealer. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So it wasn't this... enacted to protect the coinage. It was enacted to prevent the coinage from continuing. Yeah. That, uh, I, I don't know. Does that count as a strike? They got their information wrong. Yeah, that's a strike. Yeah. Two strikes, good housekeeping. Now... 
I'm immediately going to give them another strike because this is, in my opinion, this does not qualify as a weird law at all, but I want to expand on it as well. In Idaho, it's illegal to sweep debris into the street. This is just yeah. common sense shit. Yeah, just don't litter. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Trees on the sidewalks, dropping leaves, sweep those into the street. Well, no, like, like I know it's, um, I think it's the law in Indiana, you know, like, um, or at least it might be in my city, but like, um, you cannot allow like uh, your grass clippings and shit from like mowing the lawn to end up in the road. Mm -hmm. Because you could fucking kill motorcyclists doing that shit. Oh, that's fair. You know, yeah, you my, over, my, my tires you lost a little bit of traction today going over some uh, water flown across the road. I was fine, but it was just a little slippy. But yeah, that's yeah. the thing. It's like debris, like fucking, you know, like leaves or fucking grass. Like it could destroy a fucking motorcycle's traction just long enough for you to lose control of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah but it does fair. depend There's if a... it's a turn or a straight. You'd be surprised how well a motorcycle will actually stay up, though. Yep. Yeah. But I say, like, this is just common sense shit. Yeah, this it, this is strike yeah. three. And even good housekeeping says, like, if only other cities would enforce this law. It's like, yeah, no shit. Don't sweep shit into the fucking road, asshole. So, you know, maybe the weirdest part about this law is it's not more widely enforced. Still, strike three. Yeah, because as it says, it's like, it is illegal to sweep debris onto streets, highways, alleys, or any road used for public travel. That's just a good law. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, to be to be fair, there there is a tree that somebody has in their yard that has super thick leaves, and they don't clean that shit up because nobody does anything with their sidewalks around here. It just the shit out of me. Um, yeah. And that when those get squished down it becomes slick as ice. You know, it's one thing when the leaves and debris happen to fall in the street or on the sidewalk. It's a whole other one when you're blowing or sweeping it into those locations. Yeah. yeah. Idaho is on point. Don't sweep your shit into the street. Don't fucking endanger people. Well, I think how much it is is also a factor. No, just don't. Just fucking period. Don't sweep your shit into the street. I can agree with that. In Illinois, it's illegal for underage culinary students to drink alcohol. Didn't know okay. they had to make an extra law for that. So apparently in 2012, the state passed a law nicknamed Sip and Spit, which allows culinary students under 21 years of age to legally taste alcoholic beverages. Based on the reasoning that students need to learn how to taste wine during their early years of culinary school. Oh, so so you're misleading us with the title of this. You're not, they're not legally able to drink the alcohol. They're legally able to taste the alcohol. Yeah. 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 This is just a law granting extra rights to culinary students. Yeah. I'm cool with this law. Another strike for good housekeeping, though, but I'm cool with this law. Yeah. Yeah. God damn. That, four strikes that, already. Yeah. Because like, we're only at slide 13. There was a long stretch there where I was like, oh, maybe we won't get another strike. Maybe they only fucked up once. No. Well, no. We've just like, had they, three in a row. Yeah, three in a row. Yeah, and like, they even say that the law is nicknamed Sip and Spit. That means you don't swallow. Therefore, not drinking. Well, I don't like it when people don't swallow. Shut up. <laughs> it's a dumb <laughs> Illinois law, dear. 
Oh boy, I think my state's up next. Yep. <laughs> In Indiana, <laughs> it's illegal to ride a horse above 10 miles per hour. No horse shall be driven at a speed above 10 miles per hour in Indiana due to high-speed horse races back in the day. Yeah, that that's going to stop the the horse races. Mhm. Mm I mean, funnily enough, there was speed limits for horses like in Washington DC and President Grant got pulled over and ticketed by a cop for riding his horse too fast. Yeah, yeah, this, <laughs> this also just applies to... People were essentially drag racing horses. That's what yeah. was happening. <laughs> so yeah, you're like, this one's just... This was just a public safety thing. Yeah, But this still, is just like on sure. The, this is just people like listen street. to this. Th this yeah. really stopped that. I'm so, so confident that this did anything to curb that. Hey, man, we're all about racing in Indiana. Indianapolis is the racing capital of the world. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, this one is just, like, this one's just public safety, and it's also just out of date. Yeah. Oh, uh, Malachos. Yeah, there, there's a lot of states that have, like, guardianship laws where if you're on private property your parents are allowed to give you some alcohol. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it has to be your parents. can't be your parents' friend or anything. So how do we feel about this one? Does this one count? I don't think it does. It, it's it's a weird one. I'm not sure it deserved a, deserves a strike, but it's not exactly a bizarre yeah, state Yeah, it's not law. out of line. I mean, people are out there drag racing horses. <laughs> yeah, it, but I, I, I don't. I think it get barely passes to be able to get on this list. Yeah, it's just over the line. Yeah, all right. This one Wait. gets a strike. Hold on, I've. I've... Okay, yeah. In Iowa, you can't throw a brick onto a highway. Yeah, that's strike five. <laughs> Why is this a crazy law? Let's not even it's... bother looking at this. Let's just... It's a fucking I'll... highway. People are going I, fast. I, I just, I just want to read someone. it. This corn state law seems to be written in stone. Fuck you. Throwing bricks or any other dangerous instruments or toys, for that matter, onto a highway, street, or any public ground is prohibited in Iowa unless you have written permission from the... Wait, what? <laughs> that last part's the weird part. <laughs> yeah, that's the part where it gets weird. It's like, unless you have permission from the city council, it's like, wait, Why didn't what? you lead with that? <laughs> yeah, that should be the title of this one. Okay. Yeah! Let's go to Iowa and get permission from the city council and just throw jump. shit off a of fucking bridge. <laughs> yeah. Just dump a pallet of bricks onto the highway. Okay, that one kind of redeemed itself. <laughs> In the the only reason it did is because we read it and we were ready to not read it because that <laughs> title is so fucking dumb. Like, no shit you can't throw bricks onto a highway. Why the fuck would we bother? <laughs> it's like, but if you get permission from the city council, <laughs> then Wait, endanger what? as many people <laughs> as you want. <laughs> yeah, the three of us can be pretty charming, so I figure we can All go right. before the city council and get the permit. All right, we're back down to, to what was it, four, five? Yeah, four. It's four. Yeah, we're back down to four. That one redeemed itself. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm glad that I actually like you know like nah let's yeah. just let's just see what it says real quick. It's like okay. Yeah, to the audience, see what happens when you just read the headline. Yep. <laughs> Gotta do your due diligence, people. Yeah. Jesus. Don't just retweet those articles. 
In Kansas, tire screeching is banned. Sometimes it just happens. Come on. If you live in Kansas, make sure your gears or grease in your tires are checked, as tire screeching is not only considered unlawful, but painfully annoying to listen to. Sometimes you're in a rough situation. you got to stomp on the gas. Or the brakes. Or you're in a turn a little faster than you intended to be, and you're just barely holding grip. Yeah. Yeah, like, shit happens. Especially in Kansas. Oh. Uh, no, when shit starts to happen, you're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> no, no. Shit happening is what gets you out of Kansas. <laughs> so, that one's just kind of... Eh? That one's kind of dumb. If it if the law is actually specific to tire screeching, yeah, then yeah, yeah that's a, a weird law. Yeah, like it, it almost yeah. seems like a law created by a homeowners association. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, any act which causes or creates unnecessary rapid acceleration, unnecessary tire squeal, skid, smoke, or slide upon acceleration or stopping including the casting of tread, gravel, dirt, or other road surface materials from the tires, is illegal. Um, also, any acts that simulate a temporary race. What the fuck is a temporary hmm. race? <laughs> Every race is a temporary race. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, yeah, what the denotes the perpetual. difference between a regular race? <laughs> What's like, the difference between a regular race and a temporary one? Like, come, come the fuck on, man. <laughs> like, even endurance racing comes to an end after a certain point. <laughs> yeah. The penalty is a fine up to $500 and or imprisonment up to 30 days. Damn. All right. This is a weird law. <laughs> yeah. Good housekeeping just has a shitty fucking title to it it, it does it, it's like oh, okay this is weird but when you read the law it's like okay that is yeah. that the law itself is weird all right Kara Ladd that's who we should be going after yeah Sorry. fucking Kara Ladd in Kentucky a woman cannot marry the same man four times Okay, that is a weird one. A law in Kentucky forbids a woman from marrying the same man more than three times. To be fair, if you're divorcing and remarrying the man more than twice, what the fuck is going on there? Why are you using... What... Why are you using divorce as an expensive breakup option and marriage is just another level of dating? So, like, I, I can actually kind of see this because, you know, like, every time, like, this happens, you know, like, fucking, like, you know, people that... Like, people that have to, like, keep track of, you know, like, you know, like, people's, you know, like, status and shit, like, they have to update that shit. It's like, it's like, and she's, no, nah, she's divorced. No, nah, she's married again, and she's divorced. God damn it, woman. It's a lot of paperwork. It's bad for the trees. It's a lot of, it's a lot of man hours. It's bad for the government. And if you're so getting not- divorced from this person three, if you've divorced this person three times already, you really shouldn't be together. It's like, bitch, it ain't working. It just ain't working. How much moonshine were they drinking to be like, you know what, we can make it work this time. Although, I will say, like... Go ahead. Why is it specific to women, though? That's... That's a little strange. Yeah, that's fair. That is kind of weird. That's the most uh, sexist. 
Well, if that it's illegal for a woman to marry the same man four times, then it's illegal for the man to marry the same woman four times, too. One would just... assume, but it doesn't say that. Wow, the it link doesn't in spe- the link in the description. Um just brings up an article of weird marriage laws in general. Yeah. Which I think we should go over because there's stuff like uh um it's illegal for men over 16 to propose marriage and not mean it. Um huh. It's illegal for married couples to kiss in public on Sundays. Yeah, that, that's just like old religious shit. Um, Puritanical nonsense. Hey, Sunday's the Lord's Day. Yeah, it's a uh, it's in a city. I don't know what city it's in. It's illegal to bang in a church on Sunday. I've done it. <laughs> anyway, that was technically Saturday. Next up, no, no, it was after church on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> In Louisiana, it's illegal to send a surprise pizza. We sure do wish this would happen more to us, but sending an unprompted pizza is actually considered harassment in Louisiana. Okay. Um, and it can apparently result in a $500 fine. Yep. So, I'm thinking... This is an old law from like the 80s or 90s. You send a pizza to somebody. And you don't pay for it ahead of time. You'll say you pay pay upon yeah. delivery. Yeah. And In which yeah, case, I totally get it. Because I don't want the pizza. Yeah. In that case, you know, yeah. I do agree with it. If like, you know, you get caught, you know, it's a $500 fine for just being an asshole and wasting people's Nowadays, time. Nowadays, through an app when I pay for it. Yeah, I'll send, pizza. I'll send a surprise pizza to a friend. I don't mind. Say, like, hey, pizza! Some yeah, like, as long as... I don't mind having a bad day, I'm sending you a pizza. Bad like, day. as long as the pizza shows up at my house, and, you know, like, I'm not required to pay for it, mm-hmm. fuck yeah, I'm taking the pizza. Fuck yeah. Because it's pizza... In Maine, it is illegal to park in front of Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. In South Berwick, Maine, loves its Dunkin' Donuts coffee. This law was enacted because the coffee and donut chain is a hot spot and the parking lot can turn into a mega traffic jam. Again, this is just another example that there is literally nothing going on in New England. Yeah. Yeah. This is dumb. What's next? In Maryland. That's yeah, that's five. Sleeveless shirts are banned in public parks. In Baltimore, that is a it's weird law. considered a park rule violation to be in a public park with a sleeveless shirt. Yes, even if you're out for a run. That's got to be like an old fucking like modesty law bullshit. <laughs> so that links to an article of crazy Maryland laws you've probably violated. <laughs> hold on, hold, 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 hold on, hold on. Crazy Maryland laws you've probably violated. 
the first one on the list is a woman may not go through her husband's pockets while he is sleeping. <sighs> Any ladies in the chat want to comment on that? <laughs> I think cats left already. <laughs> I think most Men people left already. It's only showing two people watching right now. Oh, four. Yeah, I don't... We're back up to four. I was going to say, I don't always trust that. Yeah, it's all it's all messed up. Yeah. Every time. Because I see a lot more people on the side. Anyway, continuing. Wait, hold oh, oh. <laughs> Here's another Baltimore one. Here's an, well, a Maryland one. It is illegal to sell condoms from vending machines with one exception. Prophylactics may be dispensed from a vending machine only in places where alcoholic beverages are sold for consumption on the premises. That's oddly specific. Yeah, you can sell condoms from vending machines in bars. That's pretty much it. I mean, that's probably one of the places where you would want to have condoms ready if you're drinking yeah. and about to make bad decisions. Yeah, it's a good place to sell condoms. Um, oh, they still have anti-sodomy laws. Yeah, it makes sense. Eating while swimming in the ocean is prohibited. We can't get stuck on Maryland, though. Yeah, sorry. There's a lot of stuff going on there. In Massachusetts, it's illegal to tell fortunes without certification. A fortune teller must live in Massachusetts for at least one year in order to apply for a license. That's... You have to be licensed to be a fortune teller? In Massachusetts. Apparently. All that really so, means uh, is that you've uh, paid your fine to, to the state. Yeah. Yeah, it's your business you, you, <laughs> Like uh, You gave like you the mayor... You, you air, gave... <laughs> but you can't work at a barbershop without a license. Yeah. You gave so, the mayor a free free hand reading. And, and by hand reading, I mean he, he got to read your hand with a uh, special part of his body. Does fortune telling work like comedy and open mics? Where you just do it at shitty bars for a while for free and then you eventually work yourself up so that you get so good at it that you can open up your own shop or something? Sometimes. Okay, so clearly at the rate we're going, we're not going to finish this list tonight. <laughs> so what do you say? Like we get to like halfway mark, 25 states, and then we call it. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds yeah, that good. sounds good. All right. In Michigan, you can't sell your vehicle on a Sunday. This law was enacted in 1953. It is unlawful to sell, trade, or buy motor vehicles on a Sunday in Michigan due to religious reasons. Yeah. That one's not that weird. That one makes total sense. It's just antiquated. Yeah. Antiquated and it's religious based. But even like being enacted in Which does not belong in our government. It's just like. Mm. It being religious based does not make it weird. I'd say this is a strike against the. Good housekeeping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it used to be a whole thing where everything was closed on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, until... Partly because not... of religious reasons, but also because, hey, no one wanted to work on Sunday. Yeah. Like, the big you'd one was, like... You'd have certain things, like hospitals and whatnot, where alcohol. you'd have work. The yeah. big thing was buying alcohol for, like, almost all states for a long time. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's some states that's still like that. Yeah. There's My one state, state I forget. I, there's one state I forget which. It's like you can't buy alcohol after 8 p.m. or something. Unless you're at a bar. Yeah. 
my state finally relaxed the uh, Sunday thing a bit, but not much. Anyway. In Minnesota, dirty tires are banned. Drivers There's more Minnesota nuance soon. to this. Make sure to get your car washed prior as dirty tires are considered a public nuisance if they deposit mud, dirt, or other substances on a street or highway. Well, also, it's dangerous. It can be, yeah. So again, like, this, this is just public safety shit. This, this is basically, if you go mudding... Either be ready to wash your tires off once you get off of the trail, or fucking have it be your trailer queen, bitch. That way, the mud's on the trailer, not the road. Yeah. It's that simple. Don't be a dick. Uh, Malachal says in my county you can't get hard liquor on a Sunday and you can't buy booze after 2 a.m. Yeah. Yeah, you can't buy booze after 2 a.m. where I'm at. Um, yeah, it's yeah all the bars have to be closed at either 1 or 2 a.m. I can't remember which it is. Or it's 3 a.m. on my state. Yeah. Except on Sunday where alcohol sales have to stop at 11 p.m. and yeah. do not resume again until 7 a.m. the next morning. Well, this is also when you should know your bartender because sometimes after 2 a.m. lock the door, still hang out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but not at being which able point to buy, they're not serving not being alcohol. Able to buy liquor on a Sunday is trash. That sucks. 2 a.m. is reasonable. What? Yeah. To... In Mississippi, nutrition labels cannot be enforced. That explains a lot. In 2013... Oh, okay, this... Hold on. In 2013... Lawmakers barred towns from forcing restaurants to include nutrition information or calorie counts on menus. The same bill, also known as the anti-Bloomberg bill, bans communities from requiring restaurants to limit portion sizes. Okay, that's a devil. I, I want to double strike that one. Yeah. I don't even remember what we're up to, but yeah, that's that's dumb. <laughs> I mean, it, it is a weird law in that why would you put it on need to put it on the books? But the fact that it's there is not oh, what the law uh, is, there, isn't all that strange. Uh, there was a push for it to be federally mandated that nutrition facts be on all menus and restaurants. Yeah, that's kind of ridiculous, especially so when like, you let's just knock this out real quick. We're not yeah. going to demand that. Yeah, okay. that one's that that's pretty ridiculous considering some restaurants have specials, which means that uh, oh, they found this good set of ingredients at the store today. We're serving it today. Uh now yeah, we have like to make a up soup a whole that we brand don't always new... have. Yeah, yeah it's, well, it's well specials we... specials go two different ways. They found something for a good price. And they're like, oh, yeah, let's do that. That sounds like fun. Or, hey, hey this is uh, starting to go bad. Yeah, we have stuff that's going to expire. No, no, there are three three types of specials. There's the, this is going bad, let's get rid of it. We got a good deal, let's uh, let, let's kind of try and push it. And the, the higher-end restaurants will go, this is something that we found the ingredients for, and it's the unique thing for this week, or or whatever the case is. We're it's not on the menu, so it's our special, or, or like it's um it's like seasonally based. Like yeah, if you have a exactly. Rest, like for example, like a morel mushrooms. Like if a restaurant has like a special that involves like those mushrooms, it's like they're only in season for a limited time. Yeah, in the event yeah. of the third one, you're basically fucking the restaurant because they have to be able to print out a new menu 
every time they have a special then because they have to figure out what those nutritional facts are. You're kind of just fucking the restaurant industry if you require them to include nutritional facts. Yeah, if we if we are granting Jables double strike, that brings us up to eight, which uh, not looking good, guys. Uh, not looking good. Yeah, this law isn't exactly crazy. It's more the circumstances that made it seem necessary that are crazy. Yeah, they just wanted to like secure mom and pop restaurants from not being like. This has this much fat, this has this many grams of carbs, this is this much Especially protein. when you're f stuck fucking trying to figure it all out, because you kind of have to figure it out for each one since... Or, or take a fucking average, because every piece of meat isn't going to have exactly 22.646% yeah. fat. It's not going to have exactly yeah. uh, it, 12 grams of, uh, of protein... It also it also prevents from limiting portion sizes, so all those all those great restaurants can be like, we'll serve however the fuck much we want. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you wanted a giant tenderloin, you're getting a giant tenderloin, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, I go to. Uh, Yeah, I go to a place that has like a, a it's a fried pork tenderloin sandwich, and it's way too big for the buck every time. Well, yeah, that's how tenderloins are supposed to be. I know. That's strange, right. like, because like a lot of the time, like when I bring up like a breaded tenderloin. People kind of like, the fuck are you talking about? And it's like, because like outside of like my state, we don't count Iowa because they don't know how to fucking make them right. <laughs> but yeah, like outside of Indiana, it's like most people like when they hear bread tenderloin, it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's well, it's delicious for one thing, especially with oh yeah, mustard. A good tenderloin is fucking amazing. Yeah, it's the if same you place do that it has right. Yeah. That I've told you about. Well, that's the thing. Well, the thing is like people are like, "Oh, so it's kind of like a chicken sandwich." Like, "No, it's way better than a chicken sandwich." Yeah, you need so a knife much and fork, cut off the edges a little bit. <laughs> yeah, cuz like Iowa, they like to pound theirs out to the point where it's like the size of a hubcap and it's like really thin and it's just like that's not how you do tenderloin. Yeah, and then they just use like a regular burger bun. It's like can we just skip the bun at this point? I could get into a whole discussion about tenderloin sandwiches, but uh, I won't. Yeah, and this is not a tangent. It was brought up by the article. So yeah. if Larry was here, no. <laughs> I'm just going to do a preemptive fuck you, Larry, in case he's lurking. Yeah. Um, and that brings us to our final state for tonight. In Missouri, bear wrestling is banned. Is this even America? Define bear wrestling. A human <laughs> wrestling a bear or Pride two Month. bears wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> well, apparently this, this has to do with actual bears. This law was initiated due to animal cruelty violations and is still in effect today. All right, what is this law? Okay. <laughs> Just it's it's a it's a list of how to commit bear wrestling essentially. <laughs> okay. A person, a person commits the offense of bear wrestling. If he or she wrestles a bear, two permits bear wrestling to be done on any premises under his or her charge or control. Three promotes, conducts, or stages bear wrestling. Four advertises bear wrestling. 
Five collects any admission fee for bear wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Six purchases, sells, or possesses a bear, which he or she <laughs> knows will be used for bear wrestling. <laughs> Seven trains a bear for bear wrestling. <laughs> Eight subjects a bear to surgical alteration for bear wrestling. Whoa! <laughs> That's like a declawing, probably. Yeah. Yeah, the offense of bear wrestling is a class A misdemeanor. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, bear cool, exploitation man. will not be tolerated in Missouri. <laughs> you can't take any part in bear wrestling at all. <laughs> If you high five a guy that wrestled a bear, you're in trouble. That's, That's if you aiding even think, aiding and abetting. If you even think you spoke to someone who may know someone who participated in bear wrestling in any sort of way, to include walking past a location bear wrestling was happening, and you didn't turn them in, you're in you'll trouble. Charged, yeah, you'll be charged for perjury and bear wrestling. <laughs> and and uh, aiding and abetting. <laughs> yeah. Obstruction of justice. <laughs> if there's a charge we can throw at you, it's getting thrown. He walked by a bear wrestling bar. Throw the book at him. <laughs> that, that, I think, is a great note to end this stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ending strong. I like it. Thank you, Missouri. Oh. <laughs> Out of all of these, Missouri, you had the best one. <laughs> yeah, that one was the funniest one, I think. <laughs> the second funniest was the city council and the bricks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> telling you, we make the show really big. We go on tour for live shows. We go to... What was it, Iowa? Yep, it was Iowa. Yeah. We really Iowa. don't know how to make tenderloins. The three of us are charming enough that we could we could convince the city council to let us just throw bricks onto a highway. I'm sure we could do it. In Minecraft. It's for a promotion for a show. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank I, I, you, I, uh, Malachoth, for joining us. Yeah, it's nice to see a new face in the chat. Yeah. Or new and, name you in know, the chat. Actually whatever. sticking it out. Yeah. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. Maybe finishing this. I don't know yet. Depends what happens this week. I'd like yeah. to see it. I'd want to see how yeah, many more see, good uh, housekeeping can rack up. Yeah, right now they have eight. <laughs> yeah, eight out yeah. of 25, that's not great. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to add a thing after we get off air to remember how many strikes this fucking shit has. <laughs> well, yeah. like, technically, if we were being fair, it's like they got seven but Jables insisted on the double strike for the Mississippi, which I'll grant him. You guys did yeah. not fight at all on that, so don't say I insisted. I just threw it out there. <laughs> I got yeah, uh, yeah, so join us next week if you can, Malachoff, and uh, anybody yeah. else that's here. We'll be here regardless, but yeah, yeah. Some crazy shit might happen next week, and we might not get back to this, but we will have it on the back burner for something to do. Absolutely, we're most likely going to do it. Anyways, have a good night. Yeah, chances are pretty high. <laughs> See you next week. Well, bye, people. Bye.